is another day with the physicians where your health is our business. So they are not going to take some drastic measures. But a 10 year old coming. But also to know that it's not only when your pressure is high that you have your home. Sugar, and I don't know about any other one, but what you know is much. You're welcome back to the very awesome of your welcome. Heart is a special organ in the body, okay. and I can say it's the lifeline of every part of the body. Alzheimer's disease is a progressive neurologic disorder that causes the brain to shrink and brain cells to die. Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia, a continuous decline in thinking, behavioral and social skills that affect a person's ability to function independently. Out of the approximately 50 million people worldwide with dementia, between 60% and 70% are estimated to have Alzheimer's disease. The early signs of the disease include forgetting recent events or conversations. As the disease progresses, a person with Alzheimer's disease will develop severe memory impairment and lose the ability to carry out everyday tasks. Different programs and services can help support people with Alzheimer's disease and their caregivers. On your regular health TV talk show, The Physicians, we will be discussing the general overview and the role of NGO in Alzheimer's disease. Stay tuned. where your health is our business. My name is Dr. Martina Agmire, your anchor on this program. And with me is my co-host, Dr. Memuna Yusuf Kadiri. Well, welcome. Today we're going to be discussing the role of NGO in Alzheimer's disease. And with me in the studio, we have Mr. Ola Olani Peter. He is a senior officer of the Gabby Williams Foundation. He has over 10 years experience in various health and non-health interventions. Mr. Peter, you're welcome to our program. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Mr. Thank you so Peter. much. So now we're going to be discussing about the role of NGO in, in Alzheimer's uh, disease. And uh, your NGO, I know, is like in the forefront. You want to ever tell us a brief? Just a little brief about your own NGO. All right. Thank you so much. Um, Gabby Williams Alzheimer's Foundation uh, was founded uh, in honor of the life and work of um, Dr. Gabby C. Ayodele Williams on uh, 11th September 2017, who was also diagnosed of the disease, and the, 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 the family, the, the, the wife, um, Mrs. Uh, Dr. Abisola Gabi Williams, and the children had the thought of founding the foundation, and oh. we have five years as of now. Oh, wow. So your mission is? Uh, we have two uh, areas of priority. We have two areas of priority. One, it is our mission to 
create awareness and information about Alzheimer's disease in Nigeria. And uh, secondly, we are also uh, poised to strengthen available caregiver infrastructures and uh, caregiver institutions in Nigeria as well. So those are the two broad missions that our foundation looks into. As I think that is very important. Yeah. Because I don't think many people actually know about Alzheimer's disease. In fact, that's the, that, and that is why NGOs like this, are, government can't do everything. Absolutely. So NGOs like this are really needed to also push for that awareness, create advocacy, and get people to start screening at risk. So the, my next question is, you know, you probably said create awareness, strengthen uh, already existing services. How are you people doing this, the objectives of, you know, in, 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 in the NGO in achieving this goal that people have set? Because we are five years, and Nigerians need to know that there's a foundation and out there. Yes, and they've done five years. Exactly. No, because when we look at it, it yes, Alzheimer's is more Happy among the elderly, elderly people. but the truth is that old age is a privilege. So it shouldn't be it, it more should of a disease. It should, exactly, it shouldn't be this. You, you are not aging and uh, you are so scared a lot of disease. Age gracefully. That's what we are also we are looking for. So what are the objectives this foundation are using in achieving this uh, uh, goal? That, thank you. That's a good question. Um, as you rightly said, positive aging is now a global approach. And we don't need to wait until people are aged before the awareness gets to them. Exactly. And now, we have a lot of programs that we, we have created, we have domesticated, to ensure that we carry on the, the, the advocacy in many forms and uh, across every sector. Our advocacy majorly is not limited to media houses. We use public outdoor ad advocacy method. We use uh, print and electro electronic media advocacy methods. Mm -hmm. We also have... Uh, uh, advocacy that bridge the intergenerational gap between the old and the aged. Mm. We call it old school hip hop campaign, mm. where we go to schools, we go to schools, public and private schools, and we talk to young children, school age children, about aging, positive aging, symptoms of Alzheimer's disease, because most of these young people, they are the ones that stay with grandpas and grandmas. Sure. And so the more they understand the characteristics and future, the more they are able to relate with them, the more they are able to, to identify with them and, and also them. support them and also live a positive life towards aging. Mm -hmm. So those okay. are the methods we use. Okay. We also have um, uh, direct aid projects. Under direct aid projects, people that are already senior citizens who are in care homes okay. and care facilities, some of them are neglected. They yeah. are facing negligence. They are facing st stigmatization. So what we do is that we identify homes within our community mm -hmm. We give them direct support in, 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 in form of food. It could be in form of uh, physical cash. It could be in form of objects. It could be in form of um, any form of assistance Damn. that we think, even mm. care and love mm. is what we extend to them. So we have partners across feeds that helps us to achieve all of this. We okay. also have our preventive campaign approach. What you can predict is what you can prevent. And so, in our preventive approach campaign, we go to mostly faith-based organizations and we talk to people that sedentary lifestyle should be discouraged, yeah. good exercise, yeah. diet is involved, okay. and also they should be socially active because these are the factors that go around to indirectly affect the, 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 the morphology of the brain, the brain. Okay. at the yeah. latter age. Okay. So these are the things that we put together okay. as part of our advocacy okay, so, package. Uh, Mr. Peter, as a, as a senior officer working with uh, the Gavi Foundation and uh, w one with uh, a lot of experience, okay, in uh, handling matters that have to do with Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's. I think uh, for our, the purpose of our viewers out there, we want you to tell us uh, where does this Alzheimer's disease affect, what part of the body it affects, and secondly, what is Alzheimer's disease? Because as a foundation, you need to understand the basics before you are able to go out there. Uh, thank you. As I, as I rightly said earlier, I'm not a clinician, yeah. but as a program person, <laughs> you know, yes, program we still have some knowledge Absolutely in expert of that. clinic. Yeah. Um, Alzheimer's disease majorly affects the brain, mm. not the old brain, a part of the brain. But that is left for the clinicians to analyze. <laughs> now, going further, um, Alzheimer's disease is a gradual deterioration of the brain that inhibits individuals from performing daily tasks, 
daily skills that they need to cope with life are being withdrawn from them as they, as they age. Not that they don't know those things, but they tend to forget them and how to apply them gradually. So it's like a, it's a gradual encroachment to that aspect of the brain that captures and handles skills, cognitive skills and abilities. So Alzheimer's generally is a deteriorative condition of the brain that is gradual and is also progressive in okay. stages and about seven stages okay. have been confirmed to exist. Why are we focusing on Alzheimer's disease in Gabby Williams Foundation? Yes, uh, thank you so much. That's a good question. As I said earlier, the, 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 the foundation is named after Dr. Gabby C. Okay. Ayodili Williams. And what prompted, what prompted that was that when he was initially down with Ill ailment, the immediate family were not informed. They were not okay. informed about Alzheimer's disease. Okay. And so it was challenging for them coping with the ailment and other things. So it is their priority that what they went through, they wouldn't want other members of the society to have such experience. So they, okay. it, it is their contribution to the societal development. Okay. It is their own support to okay. the so so system okay. that they will sensitize people, they will conscientize people, and they will program um, the member of the public in a way that they will understand and demystify Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's. Okay. So that is the main objective. Okay, fine. So, you want, so you want to just tell us um, about the, the prevalence of Alzheimer's uh, disease and the African factor. All right. That isn't a big word, prevalence. Yes. For our viewers, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> How common is it? All How right, all right. <laughs> now, um, globally, um, mm -hmm. of recent, um, MNS, that's Mental Health, okay. Neurological okay. Disorder and uh, Substance Abuse Disorder, has been noticed and has been recognized by WHO to be a global pandemic. And so dementia and, all, um, and Alzheimer's precisely is also part of MNS. Okay. And so the prevalence has been on for a while, but because we are, we are in Africa, the information in this part of the world is quite low. People are not aware. And because people are not aware, due to some factors, uh, many people tend it doesn't exist. This okay. ailment has no limit to gender. It has li no limit to race. Mm -hmm. It has no limit to, to occupation. It has no limit to belief. It can affect anybody. Okay. And so it cuts across everybody. But the rate is low in Africa for the fact that we have a uh, poor data network system. Yeah. As, usual. As, as usual. <laughs> as usual. Then we also have low information about it. Proud to this time, many people who are caught up in the web of Alzheimer's disease are being misconstrued to be witchcraft. Exactly. And that was what brought about our audiovisual material, within the do Mama do mm -hmm. Of recent, we've had news of young people who beat up a woman to death okay. in the East. And there was you know, several cases like that, that people will see people soliloquizing on the road mm. or they miss their way and the next thing they accuse them they are witchcraft mm, that they do midnight that they yeah, yeah, do they, they, they are, that's why they, yeah, yeah they were coming from somewhere and probably and, mm. because they've lost their memory, memory of direction they've lost their memory of identity they ask them a particular question they are off offering another answer and when this doesn't correlate people tend to misinterpret them yeah, and take them to be right. a which, yeah. they yes, so yeah. the terms they are, so those, is, that, those are the social factors that we found ourselves in Africa. Okay. Yeah. The socio-cultural belief has not made us to understand Alzheimer's disease in a genuine yeah. um, identity, okay. and that is the condition we found ourselves. But, and I, and I, I, th I think at this point it's also good for the general public to know that Alzheimer's, having Alzheimer's disease is not, it do, it, there's no correlation with aging. Oh. It's not serenity. It is it, not. It is it, not because you are yeah, old, old that you comes. must have it's Alzheimer's disease. Yes. Yeah. But it's, it's more common oh, among the, the elderly. elderly. It's not like you must have it it's if you are aging. old, yes. And Alzheimer's disease is the most commonest out of the, the, um, the group of dementia, dementia is yeah. the most common. Yes. So we can say it's yeah. a type of dementia. It's a type it's of dementia and it's the most common. 60 to 80 percent of people with dementia have Alzheimer's disease. So please want the public to know what are those common signs and symptoms things that people should quickly look out for even yourself and if you are 
you know, in, in, a, in a group of people and you start noticing this, you can say, look, I think you need to see a doctor to check up on you. All right. Um, thank you for that question. Um, summarily, we, what we do in our foundation is that we try to make these terms very simple yeah. so yeah. that people can relate with them, they can easily understand. I've broken it down to an acronym, which we mm. call FLOW. But before I go to flow, I'll just give you the summary of the 10 early signs okay. of Alzheimer's disease. One, memory loss. Mm -hmm. It is the most prominent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Memory loss here is different from general forgetting. Forget when you, mm -hmm. for, general forgetting as in casual, you forgot where you keep your yeah. car key yeah. or your phone, yeah. and yeah. later you remember. Yeah. Yeah. It's different. It's different. So when, you kept it with your left mm -hmm. hand. Uh -huh. You know, in Africa, they say you use left hand. That's why you can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the memory loss there is that the regular activities the cognitive activities have been forgotten over years. Some, someone that knows how to use uh, the remote system suddenly just say, how do I operate this thing again? Mm. So memory loss is one. Then we also have um, change in mood. Uh, people that have this uh, ailment has a um, tendency to alternate their mood as uh, time persists. Okay. In the, in the progress of, of, this, of okay. the ailment. Changing mode Understand is common. Okay. Then we also have trouble understanding visual images. Mm. And that's why mm. at times they go on the road, they don't even know there's a road sign that is telling mm. them to stop. stop. Yeah. Okay. Even when they see the road sign, they cannot comprehend that this means stop. So the regular images and symbols that they are familiar with before, they, they, they tend not to understand what it represents yeah. again. And if you go to advanced country, mm -hmm. there are some people at a certain age, you don't allow them to drive, to, drive. Yeah, yeah. to avoid yeah. risk. risk All right? Yeah. Yes. We also have, it, it's also, one, another symptom is um, easy task. They are unable to perform easy task. Mm -hmm. Unlike before, someone that, has, that is good in mathematics, for instance, mm -hmm. you get to a certain stage, you give him even so hard now. arithmetic. Basic okay, basic, <laughs> basic things. Someone that even to, how to fry exactly. egg, how to cook, how to use the washing machine. How to recharge their, their phone. They may not be able to do it. So simple tasks, they forget how to apply simple tasks. Um, they also have uh, challenges solving problems, puzzles. It have, at times you tell them about something, they know, um, I don't really know, I don't really know what, I don't have anything to say to that. So how to handle issues becomes a challenge to them. The social withdrawal is another symptom. They withdraw from social activities. They get and close to themselves. Their immediate family. I don't want to see anybody, you know. It's also emotional at times. Because when notice they are deteriorating mentally, it affects their emotional life. Mm. So they tend to withdraw. And when people begin to withdraw from social activities, then you begin to sense something is not, is not well with this person. Then we also have uh, struggling to communicate. This might be at the advanced stage. As I said earlier, Alzheimer's disease has about um, seven stages. So at advanced stage, they may have problem to communicate. At that stage, they only use gesture. Mm -hmm. Either they, they just use sign mm -hmm. or they just use body language. But their sense is still working, working. especially the feeling, mm -hmm. the, the skin, mm -hmm. the touch sense is still mm -hmm. is w working well. Then we also have uh, misplacing of belongings. This is very, very common. Mm -hmm. You see the, the old grandmas, uh, when their uh, grandchildren are with them, they say, ah, I can't find my bangu. I can't find my, <laughs> someone has stolen some my thing in this house. And the next thing is that, they say, ah, grandma, you put it here now. So, oh, I forgot it. <laughs> They misplace their belongings. Mm -hmm. And that's why when people get to a certain age, we, we encourage them to have a trained carer. Yeah. So when we have a trained caregiver, they'll be able to manage them because okay. managing them is also important at that stage yeah. so that they don't get mm -hmm. deteriorated and they get the quality of life. And before you even said talking about the symptoms, you talked about an acronym. When we come back from our break, you will now talk, uh, at least for people to be able to remember, mm -hmm. those at home, that acronym is very, very important. We'll come back. So I've just asked, I'm sure you're you actually following what Mr. Peter is telling us. He's actually a programs officer and uh, he's been working with people with Alzheimer's uh, disease. We well, want to hear from you. Let's keep it there with our physicians out there. Let's hear from you. Have you had someone with Alzheimer's disease, dementia, forgetfulness? Are you one of those that have actually experienced one of these things? Uh, memory loss, change in moods, and of course, traveling, locating things, common things, and doing your regular tasks. We'll be back after this short break. Stay tuned. That one is very, very sure. When you are getting to some certain age that you have a memory loss, that means that old age is coming to your side. So
to my old to my own opinion i think it's old age well what can be responsible is the abnormal build of proteins in and around the blood the brain cells of the person i have never heard something like that no i've not heard of Azama's disease before uh, the only thing that you can do to assist the elderly people with memory loss is to tell them the stories. Tell them stories. Well, by bringing out the pictures of anything you want to ask them about. Pictures or videos of anything you want to ask them about. Just bring it up and it might reflash your memory and bring back the stuff you ask them about. <laughs> Welcome back. If you have just joined us, you are on to your regular program, The Physicians, where your health is our business. So before we went on break, you talked about the acronym so that people will be able to remember. Uh, so you want to tell us about this acronym? What does it stand for? What is that acronym? Thank you so much. Uh, we have tried to demystify Alzheimer's disease and make the advocacy very simple. And so the acronym we've come up with is called FLOW. FLOW. F L O. W. The F stands for forgetting. They forget their names. They forget directions. They forget their belongings. And they tend to forget several other things wow. around them. That is F. Then the second acronym is L, letter L, which stands for lose. Mm. They lose their belongings. And that is the instance I cited earlier. They lose their belongings, they lose their properties, and most often when they lose these things, they accuse other people of taking their yeah. belongings. So yeah. they lose their things. Then the next uh, uh, alphabet in the flow is O. This one is very, 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 very sensitive. They overlook. And when they overlook, they overlook safety rules, even in the house. And that is why under our care uh, plan, we have a material on how to cater for them even at home. There's a way you arrange the house to reduce accidents. Okay. Oh. You might own, put the hot plate on and they don't care about it. They just place their hand on it. Okay. So they overlook a lot of things. They overlook safety rules. They overlook their personal hygiene. They overlook their, you know, whatever. They, are, they don't care about any other thing because the, the, that sense, that humor of taking care of themselves is no more there. You have to call them out, oh, grandma or oh, grandpa, come and trim your nails. Okay. Come and make your hair. You know, they don't mm. care about So they overlook many things. Mm. Then the last of the acronym is W. Okay. This W is closely related to the African factor I mentioned mm. earlier. That W is wonder. Okay. Mm. They wonder away. Mm. And because they cannot recognize places and time, they tend to miss their way anytime they are far away from home. And when they mm. find themselves in a new community where they are not familiar with, they are very uncomfortable. They, they are anxious, they, they are fidgeting, and the next thing that the society takes on them and look at them, Madam, Mama, where are you coming from? Papa, where are you coming from? Okay. You are looking scared. So these are some of the factors that are culturally imbibed that our advocacy plan has taken care of to overlook. So the acronym is FLOW, which we have demystified okay. to the best of our ability. I want us to also educate our viewers, you know, if and because somebody may be having a relative right now mm -hmm. who is dealing with that, how can they help them manage the situation. So those at home. home. Those at home. Like yes. caregivers, that that caregivers. caregivers at home. And even the family members, Values. because you know that's a huge burden of yes. care on yes. them. Yes. And it can reduce their you know, quality of life. So what do they do? All right, thank you. Um, that's a good question. And that is one of our, our focal okay. area, training and capacity building. Okay. There are two major distinctive types of caregivers, primary caregivers yeah, and secondary okay. caregivers. Primary caregivers are termed as the immediate family members. They don't really need to have certificates. They don't need to be exactly. certified before they do that. So primary caregivers are closer to diagnosed persons than secondary caregivers. So, but all along, we ensure that we reach out to both primary caregivers who are immediate families and people who are trained in gerontology, mm -hmm. especially the, the, the nursing students. And that's why our partnership goes along even to training institutions, colleges of nursing, and other um, agencies okay. who are into okay. training. Okay. Now, what we, at Intaba, we organize trainings for people okay. to get more information about how to care for them, how to look after them, how to relate with them, communication. We have developed over six 
uh, print materials that can educate the public on caring for people living with Alzheimer's mm -hmm. disease. Okay. And those materials, print materials, are readily available in our offices. Okay. But by and large, anyone that wants to take care of um, Alzheimer's uh, patients must know that it is a task yeah. that is highly demanding. So they should yeah. be committed to it and should be ready to face the task. Mm -hmm. wow. It's actually an eye opener, okay? And you guys are also doing very, very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope you, you you are able to network with other NGOs that are, uh, that have other they deal with other uh, elderly people that mm -hmm. have uh, same uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Mr. Peter, for coming on our program. And uh, we hope that next time we will call on you. Well, of course, we are going to ask this clinician <laughs> to come talk mm -hmm. on the real uh, the real thing, the symptoms, the complications, and uh, what every other thing that needs to be known about it. And congratulations, you are doing very well. Uh, five years, uh, yeah. uh, we really appreciate That's that. Good. Just thank keep you. doing the good work Thank you doing. so much for having me. On this one, I want to say thank you so much for keeping a day with us on your TV Health Talk Show, The Physicians. Next time, we'll always uh, have very, very interesting topics to discuss with you. My name is Dr. Martina Agbemi. My name is Dr. Memuna Yusuf Kadri. And please be encouraged to follow us on all our various social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Previous episodes are always on our YouTube page. And if you want to be a guest, just like Mr. Olani, your kids are right here, please send us that, you know, um, mail on our website, which is up and running. Till next time, remain blessed.